A range of different kinds of people from all walks of life often enough end up trying to predict the end of the world in a myriad of different ways, and each of us has, at least hypothetically, tried to imagine an apocalypse of one kind or another. Most often, it's associated with explosions of exceptional force. Let's imagine an atomic bomb or a volcano exploding. The end of life for at least some people is guaranteed. But now, let's imagine what would happen if an atomic bomb exploded inside the crater of a volcano. Or maybe it's an impossibility. Who would even come up with such an incredible scenario to mix together such an evil cocktail of ideas? It's really very simple. There have been talks for some time regarding the nuclear weapons of the superpowers of the world. But they have also been preparing for something even more fearsome – climate wars. For example, the sweet couple Russia and America constantly accuse each other of their respective impact on the domestic country's climate. Recently, Russia claimed that the Americans somehow arranged, by super-secret technological plotting, the anomalous hot summer of 2010, with its peat fires and powerful smog. And some Americans in turn have considered that the Russians, in some way, sent the ruinous Hurricane Katrina to the shores of the USA. Of course, this wouldn't be real war even if it were true. Just muscle flexing, to each his own, one must pay attention to the context of each case respectively. However, many experts believe that storms and tornadoes might be the end of the exchange of niceties. Today, mankind can have tremendous impacts on nature by choice, for example, to cause or to disperse rain. But no one has yet managed to create large-scale cataclysms. Is there any country that wouldn't drop an atomic bomb in or on a volcano under certain conditions? That is, drop an atomic weapon for a positive purpose. There already have been similar cases in the history of mankind, where countries deliberately bombed fire-breathing volcanoes to divert lava away from cities. The scientists from the Hawaiian Volcanic Observatory and representatives of the U.S. Air Force conducted experiments in this vein in the 1970s. They tried to alter the flow of lava from Mauna Loa, the largest volcano in the world. They did this with a series of massive bomb strikes. But, alas, attempts to change the flow of the lava were unsuccessful. The burning streams of hot rock did not obey the puny humans with their big bombs, and the magma continued to flow where nature had intended. So, what would happen if someone decided to repeat such experiments but with an atomic weapon? If you were to bomb an ordinary volcano, one in the form of a conical mountain, then the explosion wouldn't instigate tectonic or volcanic activity. It would simply blow the top of the volcano off. The volcano would continue to sleep patiently and securely like an oven baking a cake. It would also not be harmed by radiation or by any of the other delights of an atomic strike. The fact is that the radius of an explosion of even the most powerful bombs is actually quite small, relatively speaking, and cannot reach the underground reservoir of magma. For example, the fireball of the Fat Man atomic bomb was just 200 meters wide. That's the name of the atomic bomb which was dropped on Nagasaki in 1945. Compare these measurements with, for example, Mount St. Helens, which has a height of 2,549 meters. Fat Man, or its like, would only be able to destroy a small portion at the very top at most. It would be worse, though, if, at the time of the nuclear strike, the volcano were active. Then the probability of breaking through to the magmatic tank would be much higher. But in this case, the bomb would simply begin an eruption a little earlier than was planned by nature. So now, what if you throw an atomic bomb inside the crater of a supervolcano? What I'm about to tell you is extremely top secret. This classified information has long been highly sought after, and I advise you to take special care of your online security at this moment. Okay, I'm joking. But not really. Internet security is a really important matter. Me, for example, I take great care of my privacy and security when I go online. And for quite some time, I've been advising all my friends to use a VPN, a virtual private network, which allows you to securely access any data on the internet remotely through a public network. It's similar to a firewall that protects data on your computer. And this brings us to today's sponsor, NordVPN. 
They have thousands of super fast servers in 61 countries and there's absolutely no data logging, which means they are not selling your information to marketers. NordVPN even has a Chrome browser that's lightweight and user-friendly from the first click. It secures my browsing in seconds. It's easy as pie. I recently started using their application and it's absolutely amazing. It's totally user-friendly, protecting all my browsing, no matter what dark corners of the internet I might find myself in in just seconds. They support both Android and iOS, and you can protect up to six devices at the same time at a military-grade encryption level. And there's a totally risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee you can't lose. Best of all, if you go to nordvpn.com forward slash riddle right now and use the code riddle, you will start protecting your internet experience today. You'll get a 77% discount on their three-year plan. But still, what will happen if a nuclear bomb is dropped into a supervolcano? A supervolcano is not like your usual fire-breathing cone. It represents a very, very large and exceedingly thin area of the Earth's crust. The magma pulsates under it. There can even be several ordinary volcanoes within the territory of such a tectonic giant. Nevertheless, an atomic bomb is unlikely to wake up such a giant as its magma is located at a depth of as much as 8,000 meters. If only one were able to drop a nuke at just the moment of the awakening of a giant such as this. Alas, this phenomenon must be considered a rarity as eruptions of this magnitude occur not more than once in 17,000 years. As there are only 20 supervolcanoes on the Earth, according to the laws of probability, the likelihood that at any moment one of them might begin to spit lava is incredibly small. Despite those odds, it does seem that our civilization has been incredibly lucky thus far, if one can call it that. Yellowstone, a supervolcano located in the USA, has recently begun to show an increase in activity. Seismologists at the U.S. Geological Survey directly implicated this monster with recent earthquakes in Idaho. In January, the Geological Survey recorded as many as 108 tremors, and in the area of the most active geyser, the soil has recently subsided by as much as 2 centimeters. However, according to calculations of American scientists, an ordinary bomb would be unlikely to break through to Yellowstone's magmatic capsule. But then there's the legendary Tsar Bomba. Scientists believe that the diameter of its destructive reach could be as much or even more than 3,000 meters. If this megabomb were to be dropped on the supervolcano, it's quite likely it would split like a coconut, but with hot lava flows emerging instead of refreshing coconut milk. A volcanologist from New Zealand, Dr. Robin Andrews, has described the consequences of such an eruption. In the first minutes of the disaster, the picture which unfolds is truly intriguing. Nesting at the volcano, snow-white birds would fly into the air due to a whim of nature. They are the first who feel the danger that is coming from the depths of the stone giant. After this, streams of fire would fly into the sky. At the beginning, these fire streams would be blood red, but after a time, they would exhibit all the colors of the rainbow after getting refracted in the air. This evil fireworks show would quickly catch up with the birds and, in a flash, turn them into flaming torches. They would then fall as smoking, blackened husks back into the fiery abyss. For this moment, the scene would be achingly beautiful as a result of this terrifying performance, and then it would proceed to turn into a real hell on Earth. The lava would begin to pour from the volcano soon after the blast of fire. In reality, it wouldn't go beyond Yellowstone Park, but the pyroclastic wave, the streams of 400-degree red-hot mud, would cover about 10,000 square kilometers. At this temperature, people just get cooked no one could possibly survive. According to preliminary estimates, about 200,000 people would die in the burning goo. A deadly cloud of volcanic ash would rise in the air to a height of 50 kilometers. Wrapping one's face in gauze bandages or using respirators or gas masks will not protect one from the ash as the particles are so small. Most horribly, they mix with mucus in the lungs, solidify and turn into cement. In addition, thanks to the atomic bomb, these ashes would be radioactive. Due to such emissions, a month after the explosion, we wouldn't be able to see the sun from anywhere on the entire planet Earth. The volcanic winter will have begun. 
the temperature in many parts of the world would drop to minus 50 degrees. Long frosts and the absence of light would kill most vegetation. It would become difficult to breathe anywhere on the devastated planet. But that's not all. The eruption of the supervolcano would provoke a whole chain of natural disasters. Incredibly powerful hurricanes, tsunamis, and earthquakes would occur all around the world. They would lead to such calamities as, for example, the meltdown of nuclear power plants. And volcanoes from all over the world would awaken. New eruptions would begin to appear. As a result of all the natural disasters, the Earth would change radically. For example, North America might go completely underwater, turning into an Atlantis of the 21st century. But what if none of this were true? Because, in fact, the most powerful atomic bomb in the world could not cause an eruption of a supervolcano. At least, this is the opinion of Valery Ruzich, a scientist from Irkutsk. He's convinced that explosions, even at great depths, cannot lead to cataclysm. They would cause only movement of the Earth's crust at locations where earthquakes usually occur. And this movement wouldn't be instantaneous, which means it could be useful. He believes that it would be a safe method for discharging the energy accumulated in the Earth's crust, reducing the occurrence of earthquakes. The scientist has already conducted his first research in the Lake Baikal area in Russia and is quite pleased with his results. So, does that mean the end of the world wouldn't happen in the case of our diabolical explosion? There's no guarantee. At present, there's only this single view from a lone scientist. Most researchers, anyway, believe that you can't avoid universal cataclysm as the result of such an explosion. There was an eruption of the Toba supervolcano located in Indonesia on the island of Sumatra 74,000 years ago. It's believed that after this mega-eruption disaster, there was a volcanic winter encompassing our entire planet which lasted for 10 years and a resulting ice age which lasted for a thousand. Nature had thus led humanity into a bottleneck. That's the name for an impoverishment of the genetic supply of a species due to a sharp reduction in its population. This halted human development for a millennium. But is this really true? On the basis of his archaeological research, Michael Petraglia, an anthropologist with the University of Cambridge, came to the conclusion that after the eruption of Toba, the number of people on the planet did not radically decrease. Under the leadership of Claudia Timrak, a group of German scientists developed an eruption model. It turned out that, according to their research, the temperature after the cataclysm fell by only 2 to 3 degrees, and the air cleared in 2 to 3 years. The atmosphere of our planet is so vast, so dynamic and powerful, that even numerous explosions and eruptions can't block it off completely. Of course, in the beginning, the air would be extremely dirty and the inhabitants of our dear Earth would have to hide in underground shelters, bunkers, catacombs, subway tunnels, underground houses, etc. The main thing is to have large reserves of water and food. But after a couple of years, people would be able to exit their underground prisons, and they might emerge into a real Eden on Earth. By this time, the volcanic dust will have been absorbed into the soil. The air will have become crystal clear, and life in the waters of the Earth as in ancient fairy tales, would be thriving. Volcanic waste would have enriched the soil to an unprecedented degree with potassium and phosphorus, allowing for fantastically abundant harvests. Wheat plants would grow taller than trees, and wheat fields would turn into veritable jungles. There would be a profusion of food, not only for people, but also for animals, birds, and the inhabitants of the seas and oceans. The inhabitants of the planet would no longer have to think about obtaining their proverbial daily bread. Like in a fairy tale, nature would provide them with new dishes day and night. Anyone want fresh crab for breakfast? Mosey down to the nearest pond, it will be filled with crustaceans. Or would you prefer fresh venison for lunch? There's probably an entire herd of the horned beasts grazing in a neighboring meadow. Under such conditions, civilization would be able to grow in leaps and bounds and would soon prosper. But perhaps this forecast is a bit too optimistic. Even if a paradise were to come after the apocalypse, most likely hardly anyone would make it there. Most scientists believe that approximately 95% of our human population would die from a Yellowstone eruption. So is it worth it to let the genie out of the bottle? 
And of course, there are countervailing propositions. Rumor has it that the devil is not so black as he is painted. Still, there's no question. There are a number of people who say that the horrible consequences predicted from the eruption of Yellowstone are just the fantasies of scientists posing as wannabe science fiction writers. So who's right? About this and other things we will discuss in future releases. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel.